So this was one of the sample pieces I had. Just a regular piece of maple. Uh, I put a clear, I put a coat of yellow on. Then I put another coat on, which gave me green. And if you know your color chart, you'll figure out what that color was. Then I didn't like what I had here, so I put a couple more colors on it. Did that as a sample. Didn't know what to do with it, so that's what I did with it. I wanted a wide rim so that I could have something to do some pyrography on. Pyrography is new for me, and that was actually the second one. This is the first pyrography. Don't put it too near the paint. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, so this is just a piece of maple, finished on the inside. I wanted to put some, it's not actually finished yet. I wanted to put some decorations on it, and I looked at a few different fern leaves and these types of things. I didn't like any of them. So I had some butterflies that I had photocopied and enlarged and shrunk. So I cut out some templates out of, out of uh, thin plastic and traced them and then wood burned. Not being very proficient at wood burning, wood burning an arch on an arch is, is not easy. And then my wife looked at it and she said, well, those butterflies really should be, have a little iridescence to them. So now I have to get my airbrush out and get some iridescent and put some iridescent colors on. So it may show up again in the fall if I ever get it finished. This was the second round of wood burning when I did these. <coughs> and you'll see that the arches are not great because it's hard to get a wood burner to go around an arch, even if it is a flat surface. So, what I wanted to bring these up and show everybody was, just don't make a regular bowl. Do something with it. Look what won first and second place in our competition. Two pieces had wood burning on them, one piece had some decorative finish. Kind of think outside of the box. Do something extra. We can all learn, doesn't matter how old we get. And if it's not good, redo it a couple more times. Some of those pieces of this. So that's uh, my spider's web. <laughs> It's a piece of uh, maple, uh, maple, yeah. apple wood. I uh, wasn't supposed to come to a conclusion. It was, it was just an experiment with using the uh, pledge. Anyhow, as it turned out, uh, it worked out pretty good. I had to leave, I started out with a little bit thick. It was basically a, a disc and a cylinder. And in the end, I had to steam these to bend them to get them into a, a different shape. But using the pledge, <coughs> I kept reducing the, the thickness. And I kept applying the pledge and reducing it and applying it. I just wanted to see how far it, it would go. And it's, I was quite um, impressed that it was, I was able to do it. The thing, if I ever did another one, which I would have to have a mental <laughs> I would pick a different species of wood. Uh, the, the apple wood, when you get into the inside, especially at, at the, at in, the, in the core, it tends to have a lot of fractures in it. And uh, this didn't have a whole lot, but it did have some that were making me think twice. <laughs> but, uh, and then using, I had to experiment with the, the, uh, the pledge because I, I made some sample pieces and I, I steamed them and bent them. They will bend with the pledge, but they don't bend as well. So I, I, I didn't put any pledge on this until I steamed them and bent them, and then I put the, uh, the pledge on it. But, and it's just, uh, 
I couldn't use an NS, we used, Zoman and I used an NSK, it's a dental drill to do a lot of piercing. But with this, it's not, the dental drill just goes straight in 90 degrees. This isn't 90 degrees, this is all on curvatures as a, as a web would be. So I had to, to get different processes uh, to do it. And again, it's where the tools that uh, Richard helps me to produce. Uh, anyhow, that's my spiel on my, my spider's web. Mm. Oh, I have one more piece to, if somebody can just pass down that piece of oak. I was given this uh, piece of oak pearl by Dan Graham, and again, I'm going to have to find out what I did to piss them off so much to give me this piece of wood. <laughs> <laughs> Miserable. It was very, very punky. You don't even see wood, wood green in, in uh, most of the wood, other than where the, the branch was coming through. So I, uh, with this one, I turned it to about an inch in thickness. I sent down a few pictures of it, and we, even with the uh, the spur drive, it went into the wood about three quarters of an inch. It was a one inch spur drive, and so when I turned the I, got, I turned the outside shape of it, and then I put the pledge on it, and a lot of pledge. It just it just soaked it right in, and then I uh, I hot melted this piece to a block of wood that I could put in the chuck. And I, I left the, the, the core, the center, I kept my tail stuck up as long as I possibly could because it was just that, that punky. But it was, I just wanted to see what the, what the pledge would do. And it's, uh, it's, it's quite amazing how, how hard it made that, that wood. To... Don, does pledge change the color of the wood? No? It brings out colors. Okay, no, I was wondering if it had darkened the wood or... No, and you can put any finish you want on it. Okay. Now there is a, uh, a wide variety of pledge products out there. <coughs> I buy the one with that's acrylic in it, and it's the acrylic that changes the, brings out the different the different colors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, yep. They sell that at like Sobeys or Superstore. Yeah. Or? yeah. All the Walmart. Walmart. Home Hardware is the home, home hardware. hardware, and uh, and I bought it at Walmart before. Okay. You did that cherry burl, did you also use pledge on that? Uh, just in one I section of it, just at the, at the neck. Yeah. So it, you did use it, and it helped considerably? Yeah, I just didn't want it to come apart while I was For sure. when I was turning it, because <coughs> at the neck, uh, with the cent I call it centrifugal force, I don't know what it is actually, but when it's rotating, if, it's, if there's a void in the neck, it will tend to to separate. Mm -hmm. I've turned them before with voids in the neck and yeah. I had to put another uh, piece of plywood, a disc, on that on that void. Collar on it? So. Yeah, and once it, once I finished it then I, I took it off. But again you have to put the, the, uh, the finish on. I use double boiled linseed oil and then a turnus polish. What that does, it allows the uh, good adhesion to the hot milk, but then when you want to take it off It'll, a lot of times it'll just it'll just pop right off, and if it doesn't, you just take a heat gun and heat it up. Take something cool like a screwdriver or whatever, just roll it by it, and it'll, it'll pick it pick it right off. So, if you had a piece of wood that was really punky, could you soak it in pledge for a little while, and then, or do you just sponge it on? You, you could, but it's only going to go in in so far, right? So what I what I did with this one, I, I, I turned this outside edge, so it was still a, an inch and a half in thickness, and I, I didn't do anything to the outside. I, I took it off the lathe. Uh, I, I put a lot of pledge on this, and then I took a, a, a wooden block and I mm -hmm. I hot melted it. I turned it to this diameter, and I hot melted it. And the glue sticks to the pledge. Yeah, it could be. It didn't matter because I didn't mind. I, I didn't. I wanted it to stick. I wanted it to yeah. stick really, really hard because I, I parted it off. I left enough material that I could part it off. 
I didn't, it was going to be waste anyhow. Okay, yeah. The thing that I wanted was to, to hold it together. It was, it was that, I've seen a lot of funky wood in my life. I've never seen anything <laughs> like, like, like this. So I'm going to meet Dan and ask him, what the your do? cursed bull. But, uh, but again, like I was saying, I, and I, I, when I started to do the inside, I left the tailstock into it. And I worked this way to the bottom, and so it was about a, at least an inch in diameter, and then it tapered down. And then when I wanted to take it off, I thought, I'll just take it down. We cut down over three quarters of an inch in thickness. It just disintegrated. Boom. It, was, it was gone. But, but anyhow, I just wanted to see what the, what the pledge would do, and again, it worked out okay. Worked out good with this one, too. These are just two more pieces. Out of the um, yeah, yellow birch burl that I helped a friend get through there earlier. It was four foot in diameter and five foot high. And I brought in a couple of pictures, just gives you a relative scale for those that hadn't seen it before. But anyway, they just about nice. I like them. Uh, we've got your hand, but I can't. Chris and Dawn. This, this was a solid bowl. And it still is. Individual <laughs> salad, perfect. But I had cut it for uh, a woman down in, uh, outside of Wolf Hall, and uh, she wanted to make a bunch of salad bowls to give out as gifts. And we had cut them and turned them, or not turned them, but cut them around in the bandsaw and coated them with sealer. And I sent them back with my wife to her and said, "Store them in your garage." <laughs> when I took one up to see if it was ready for her to turn, last Christmas, I guess it was, or just before Christmas. Anyway, it, there was checks in it and it kept getting smaller and I just kept turning until I got to the point of it was solid. So, so I told her, I sent her an email and said, this is, uh, I call it uh, salad on the farm because she has 10 acres there and horses and she calls it a farm. But then uh, I just made a wall at the top. It's just sort of flat in the bottom on the top like that. Just do something different. And I ended up buying an eccentric chuck and this is my first attempt on the finial at turning something in a different axis. That's it. Oh, not quite. I am also selling <laughs> a piece of African blackwood. I have uh, one piece left that was the clarinets that the, we had bought in years ago from Steve Kennard. I can't turn it. As soon as I take one turn with it, my sinuses are just blown away. So. We're going to sell it if anyone's interested. $30. This is my second attempt at doing a segmented bowl. I did one and I ended up getting hooked onto it. Now I got all kinds of jigs and straps and you name it. It's amazing how deep the rabbit hole is, eh? Yeah, another one. So. Anyway. So is that.